an example I could give is like the Dora Milaje. That came all together because for 18 years I've been looking at tribal stuff from Africa, from the Philippines, from Native Americans, and I've already tried those shapes on game characters, on elves and all that stuff, but sometimes they don't approve it, you know? So. They would have a meeting and then they uh, they decide okay we need like a baby version of the group so uh, the lead would come to me uh, which is uh, the lead at that time was Charlie Wynn he's actually the guy who got me in Marvel I don't know if you're familiar with him but he's done like he's designed Thor for the first Thor movie so he uh, he thought I was like the best guy for that job which is like you know thank you the compliment you know it's like uh, so but for the cuteness of it um, but I used to do really scary creatures, so I'm like, I don't know if I'll be able to make this cute, but, um, but luckily at that time I had already had kids, and that's the kind of stuff that I would um, use, you know, so in terms of reference, uh, in terms of creative process, reference would be the first thing I would get. So something that would help me uh, get to that emotion I want to have, and visual reference where animal reference or texture reference, you know, so with, with having giving me ideas to what I could uh, use. Uh, but sometimes, even before the reference, a, a visual image would come into my mind already, and that is helped sometimes by the director. Because with um, Baby Groot, the first ideas were, is, how does he look like? He's not gonna be a baby, right? Because he's, he's a creature, and is he a stick? You know, because uh, 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 the adult Groot is just a big, like a big bark, a big plant. Um, so first we have to know he's a plant, not a tree, and that's from James Gunn. James Gunn wanted to make sure I know it's not a plant, uh, it's not a tree, it's a plant. And you think that seems like something really simple, but for me that's a very clear uh, direction that I could go. So he's a, a plant, so plants are not hard barked, right? So okay, that's one. So what can I get, what, what references can I get to, uh, to give me examples of that? So, maybe a, a pickle or an ampalaya. <laughs> I actually looked at that because it has those folds, you know? And then uh, uh, just a bunch of different types of vegetables that's more like, a, like an alien looking texture. So that one, and then when he said he wanted um, a stick with a face uh, set up, so when, when, when that was given as a description, then that's when you know, I know my parameters and then I could design from there. Because uh, before that, I was designing them really crazy or alien-looking ones that it just doesn't—it it doesn't look good. And you, you get out all the bad ideas, so you keep on sketching the bad ideas, so the good ideas eventually come. And maybe some ideas, concepts from those bad ideas, you could use to create a new uh, design. So that's kind of like my process, and it's not actually in order. It's a little crazy in the mind, you know, when it goes on in there. So get the reference, uh, design from imagination, and then um, take your designs and meld or incorporate each other, each element from different designs into one design, then get uh, four to five ideas and then present that to the director. And after that, he'll choose which direction. Of course, the five ideas or four ideas won't look the same. They'll go in very different paths so that the director can choose which road to go to and once you narrow that road then you could design within that road then that's when four more designs that would have the, almost the same kind of look and then if he likes one of it and you do color passes on it that's usually what I like to do sometimes the color passes comes early there's no real set way of doing it and uh, I go from emotion really whatever it feels right then that's what I kind of do um, but that's kind of like the process uh, it's a little confusing sometimes, but hopefully that step that I uh, mentioned earlier is kind of like a good way. I would say nothing's really finished. You know, you just keep on working on it until the client wants it, and then that's finished for that phase. But then for your phase, you might still keep on taking it. 
uh, different places is different levels of finish. You have to be able to tell which which place can I finish it to this level, you know. But at Marvel Studios, the finish level is when you really zoom in and you see the eyelid fold. That's how, and, and some of the eyelash, sometimes even the like reflection in the eye, if, if you have time to do that, it's just very impressive and then you can kind of finish. And, and knowing your material, if the material is shiny or metal or cloth, like you know, make sure that finish is very apparent because then you know, that, that's, that's the level of quality we try to take things. I think a balance is good in your life. Um, I know when you're younger, you're, you don't have much um, responsibilities maybe. That's why when you're younger, that's when you really can push your body to the limit and do as much work as you can and sometimes just um, keep on working the same thing for a while and developing it. If it's a painting, it's a different story. Painting, you can see the fin level of finish uh, quality of the piece. But with design, it's almost like you could take that idea and develop it more and streamline it more and eventually come up with another greater design. Because an example I could give is like the Dora Milaje. That came all together because for 18 years, I've been looking at tribal stuff from Africa, from the Philippines, from Native Americans, and I've already tried those shapes on game characters, on elves and all that stuff, but sometimes they don't approve it, you know? So all of that together, I just put it this one time and it actually worked well better. Now that I have more vocabulary and more experience, I balanced it much better, so.